This is the CoAguCheck XS Plus, a professional care meter for monitoring INR. At the moment, patients have their warfarin levels monitored either through their GP practice. Some GP practice use the CoAguCheck XS Plus, or other GPs um, have a venous sample taken, which then goes to the lab and the lab then return the result back to the GP practice who then rings the patient to um, advise them of any changing in their dosage. If, however, you're using the Coagucheck XS Plus, the patient comes in, would have a capillary sample taken and they're given their result there and then and advised of any change in dosage. So, if you are looking to use this product within a pharmacy, there are several ways that you might be able to use this service. Some PCTs actually commission pharmacy to run their INR clinics through. So rather than the patient going to the GP at all, they go directly to the pharmacy and have their INR levels monitored there um, using a decision-based software. So the patient comes in, has a capillary sample done, you then input the information into the decision-based software, which will give you a result. The patient is then dosed there and then and goes away. Uh, another way that you can use the service is for individual patients who have been unable to get to their GPs. Quite a lot of patients who are on warfarin are young. Some could be with congenital heart disease, valve replacements, and it's difficult for them to get to their GP surgeries. And as the pharmacies are open longer hours, it's very often that patients would probably find a better service being able to go to their pharmacy and having their test done at the pharmacy rather than losing time from work. Another service area that you could provide would also be to dental practices. Any patient who is on warfarin and who is going to have any sort of minor surgery would need to have their warfarin taken that day before they go and have that surgery performed. So for example, if they were going to have a tooth extraction, they could have their warfarin measured at the pharmacy first and then take their reading to the pharmacy. Um, from the pharmacy straight to the dental practitioner. So, in order for us to be able to do a test using the CoAguCheck, we switch the meter on using this button on the front. Okay, it takes a few seconds to come on. It then beeps. And you can then get a series of screens. The screen that you're going to be looking at is the one that says patient test. You would press on patient test. You then get a little hourglass which is just checking the internal workings, the electronics of the meter. Once it's done that, it confirms that that's okay and then you then get a strip sign down the centre of the meter is telling you that it's now ready to perform a test. The strips that you need to use with the CoAguCheck come in a vial. These need to be stored at room temperature. Take the lid off the strips. Take the strips out in the direction that they are in the pot. You then insert a strip into the meter. You then need to make sure that you put the lid straight back on the pot of strips as there is desiccant in the top and the strips will become degraded if you leave the, leave the top off at any time. You then have an hourglass and you get a 45 second countdown before the strip is ready for you to perform a test. What this is doing is it's heating, the meter is heating the strip up to the temperature that it needs to in order to be able to do a test. With each pot of strips, you get a code chip. The code chip needs to be inserted into the top of the meter. The meter will save in its memory a list of 60 batch codes for strips. So for example, this particular meter, I've used this particular batch on this meter before, so it didn't ask me for a code chip. If, however, I had put the strip in it would have come up with a code chip message telling me that I need to insert a code chip into the meter. 
Okay, so once the strip has heated up to the correct temperature, I then get a 120 second countdown in order to do the process. Using a finger pricker, at this time what I would do is I would get the patient to wash their hands, rub their hands together to make sure that they promote the blood flow. I would put my gloves on in order to perform the test. Using um, a single-use multi-patient finger pricking device, I just take the cap off. I would then hold the cap against my finger, pressing firmly against the side of the finger, and then firing. I would then ask the patient to put their hands down by their sides for about five seconds, again to promote the blood flow. I'm now going to apply a good hanging drop, which is 10 microliters of blood, to the test strip area by placing the drop on the clear area, just holding it there until the meter beeps telling me that it has sufficient blood. If for any reason I hadn't got enough blood, the meter would actually tell me at this point that I hadn't got enough blood and I would ha then have to re-prick another finger and go through the process. So as you can see, within seconds I get a reading, 0.9, which is normal. Another way that you can actually dose the test area is by holding the meter flat and taking the meter to the actual drop of blood and holding it against the side of the strip. This will also draw the blood in up to the strip and be able to test. This is particularly useful for patients who are on warfarin as they tend to bleed quite easily. So you can just put the strip against the flow of the blood and then that will just draw it into the strip and then within seconds give you your INR reading. And that's basically all there is to doing a test. Take the strip out, dispose of it as you normally would within your clinical waste and then the meter is ready to perform another test. When, one thing you need to be careful about is that you do have two minutes to do this process but once you've actually done a finger prick using the um, finger pricker you only actually have 15 seconds to get the blood onto the test strip before the blood starts to coagulate. So you've got two minutes to do the process but only 15 seconds once you've done that finger prick. When it comes to quality controlling your meter, every time you use the meter and you insert a strip into the meter, it has its own internal QC, which will actually test the electronics of the meter and it will also test the expiry of the strips and the integrity of the strips, or if the, the strip has had any sort of strip damage. So you're unable to perform a test on a strip for any reason has degraded or has expired. We also have a liquid QC which checks the range of the meter and we would recommend that you use this um, dependent on the amount of times that you're using the meter but um, you would have to work to a protocol as to how often you do that. External QC, you can link up to NEQAS who will perform this test for you. They will actually send out tests four times a year for you, obviously at a cost. Um, another way of quality controlling it, if you needed to, you can also send random samples to your local laboratory who will correlate their system with our meter and history has it the correlation is excellent with lab systems. So there are various ways that you can quality control the meter to make sure that you are um, providing the best service and safest service for your customers.